What's up, everybody? Welcome back to... Hashtag Ask Liveling TV. This is episode... Eight? Eight. Eight? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty sure. <laughs> but uh, th thanks for tuning in, guys. This is the show where we take your questions when you hashtag them, ask... Live Lean TV, put them on Twitter, at me, at Brad Guthrie, or any other social media, and we'll answer them on camera. At me? You mean tweet me, right? No, at me is at like me. the cool slang. Oh, is that the what kids, people say these days? The new kids, like, at me. I'm so out of it. <laughs> You're so out. <laughs> uh, so, uh, last episode, I got a little fired up at a couple questions, so, uh, you know, I'm a passionate dude. Just right. happens. Right. This is Brad Guthrie, the host of Live Lean TV. This he is... really, really cares about I do. This. That's why, like, when people kind of say things where it's like they're... They make excuses. Excuses, you know, I'm going to call you on it. So <laughs> that's, that's how it's no going to roll. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you need that kick in the butt, to be right. completely honest. Right. We're, we're just doing it to help you guys. Yeah. It's friendly kicks in the butt. So this is... Uh, let's jump right into this question here on Twitter. You want to answer the first one? Sure. Okay. First, Throw it at me. First question from Carla Gate Ten or Gate Ten. Uh, I always end up stressing out when I don't work out. What should I do and eat on rest recovery days? That's a great one. I used to totally yeah. stress out on my rest days. You too, right? Totes. You just sit there and you, all you think about is go. I got. I want to go to the gym so bad. That's you just so twiddle true. your thumbs and you're so like, true. don't know what to do with yourself. Yeah. There's so many memes on the internet about that. Yeah. Um, and but, it's so yeah. and it's so backwards from regular people who don't don't want to work out. It's like yeah. they 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 just have to like force themselves to go to the gym, and then they're probably seeing these memes and like, what is up with these people? <laughs> Makes no sense. But fitness is definitely fitness is like a drug. Like once you feel the natural yeah. high that you get from a great workout and seeing results in the mirror. Oh yeah. And the energy it's increase. It's addictive. It's addictive. So like, that's why. Actually people have to pull back a little bit and it's for the better because yeah. you need to give your body recovery. Right. It's great to go beast mode for a while, but after a while you're going to hit a wall. So yeah. you got to um, limit yourself a little bit to how much you train and learning to enjoy and not stress out on rest recovery days is essential for your long-term success. Yeah. It really is essential. So, But that's not to say that you should just sit on the couch, Netflix and chilling and well, well, I mean, Netflix that is a good way. <laughs> we like <laughs> Hey, no, wait a minute. <laughs> that kind. You're okay. saying you don't like Netflix and chill? I No, I'm saying sometimes we watch movies on Netflix and we chill. But Do you that's know a what different... Netflix yes, and chill Yes, I know. Oh, my gosh. She's being all like PG over there. I know. There. I'm just saying. Freak. I'm saying that watching a movie on the couch <laughs> This happens when you're Netflix and chill. <laughs> I'm pregnant right now. If you're listening on the podcast, happened. you can't see my giant yes. belly, but I am quite pregnant anyway yeah we're not talking about that kind of netflix and chill like stop okay no, i'm embarrassing listen yeah you are i'm getting all flush now but um what to do on rest and recovery day things like going to the movies is a great idea or sitting on your couch and watching a movie that's a great thing to do on a rest day it's it will actually allow your body to heal itself but it's going to drive you but, insane if that's all if you're that into fitness like we are <laughs> and if we sat on the couch all day and didn't move we, i would go freaking not all insane day. Yeah, so that's what i'm saying day. like but get for out, an evening go for a walk go to the beach shoot some hopes was what i do oh yeah Go for a bike ride. Go for a rollerblade. We have a really good video coming out soon it about might be active out. recovery. I'm day. hoping it's already out by this oh, point yeah, if yeah. we could ever get approval on it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we like follow us on our social media and see what we do on our yeah. active recovery days. We have a lot of different activities that we enjoy that are not intensely working yeah. out. So there's, you know, you've got to kind of have hobbies for yourself. Yeah. Find things that you're interested in and that you really love doing that feel fun to you. Um, that are somewhat physical, but not intensely physical. And that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. Good? The show got off to a good start, I feel. <laughs> I mean, Talk you about just... Netflix and chill, and <laughs> you brought it up. I just was I like... did not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did. <laughs> let's go back okay. and play the tape. Say who... Let, how about let's just forget it. Actually, I think I did bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's next, not that kind of show, Bradley. Next, this show has no boundaries. All right. You know Next. what I'm calling Bradley, he's in trouble. Yeah. Okay, so Claire W. says, 
Loving the Return of the Q&A series. Yes. Awesome. So are we. Um, we would love to know how you guys are preparing for the fourth family member. <laughs> I, like the, I like the fourth. <laughs> yeah, because Bruno's the third. Um, have you figured out how you will both get in workouts and who will do the cooking and how you'll keep motivated when you've had no sleep? Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> have we figured this out? No, I mean, no. <laughs> just like most things in life, you're going you're gonna to have to just take it day by day. Yeah. It's, uh, everyone keeps saying to us, oh, like you guys wait till you, you or don't know what you're in for. And it's I'm so, so ready for the out. challenge. Yeah. I'm so ready to prove people wrong. I, yeah. that, like I'm just so fueled up and amped up to be like, look, we did it. You're almost more motivated because people say you can't do it. Yeah. Like, we're like seven, seven, almost seven and a half months. Seven and a half right months now. in. Like she's yeah. looking great. Like she, Thanks, and, she doesn't have these crazy mood swings. She's no yeah. like crazy cravings. Like, and I'm not like gorging myself on every food in sight. Like, no, I'm still she's still eating reasonable incredible. amounts. Yeah. So I think we're going to be all right because Guarantee of our mindset. You will be all, yes. We mindset. know we're going to be all right. Because we know how to handle but our I, minds. But I'll admit, though, like when I don't get my sleep, um, I feel like I'm hungover. Yeah, that is going to be a hard part. And that's something we're not really prepared for. And how can you even prepare for that? We don't know yeah. what this baby's temperament is going to be like. And I just don't know how to prepare for that. I mean, what are you supposed to do? So when it comes around, we will then figure out strategies to deal with it. But for, for now, it's not like we're you know, making a list of plans or anything, but it's, it is something we're thinking about. But the one thing I am concerned with is, uh, the business. Mm. Wow. We're, we're, well, we've been taking steps to hire help to yeah, carry us through it. So which is great. Like we're, we, yeah. we just brought on our first full-time employee. Yeah. Shout out. I mean, we've had a lot of part-time employees for, um, until now, but yeah, nobody that's been really full-time like we, like the two of us are on the yeah. business. So now we're doing it. But I mean, I'm looking at getting, uh, an office outside of the home. Right. So there's a whole bunch of things so we're going to work through. You get away from crying baby sometimes. But uh, yeah, just to focus, to, to, to run the empire. But who's going to do the cooking? We both we'll will. We'll both be doing it. We'll both do it. And we'll probably ask our parents to do it every time they come over. Or we may get like a meals prep service. Like Yeah, we could do that. Actually, those are getting really popular and that might be helpful. Yeah. There are lots of ways to make things we work. We will manage. Mm -hmm. We're going to manage. We're going to do it. And we'll take you guys along the journey. We're actually um, happy to share everything that we do. If we find success with parenting, we'll share that with you guys. Yeah. Okay, Wait. next question from Greg XD says, Hey, is that normal if after a hard workout and a good meal, I want to sleep? And should I resist <laughs> it or go to sleep for an hour? <laughs> Totes normal. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would think that's definitely normal. I mean, I don't feel that way anymore, but I think when I first started training, I definitely felt that just because it wipes your energy out, you know? Um, but food coma is really, really common, especially if the meal is quite heavy and like has a lot of fat and carbs in it. It can really put you into a coma. Um, but I think you should go ahead and take a little nap. Why not? And just like a cat nap, you know, if you have time for it. If you have the lifestyle that you are able to take a nap after your training, that is the absolute jealous, best but... thing that you can do. <laughs> yeah. It's hundred percent. It's good for your you. body needs yeah. to recover after a workout. And yeah. if everybody could take a nap after the workout, I'd be like, take a nap after the workout. But a lot of times mm -hmm. people have to go to work. Yeah. Um, there's or their the, workouts late at night. Yeah, or in your the workouts morning, late or... at night, and that's actually one of the re good reasons of training at night is that you get to recover, go to sleep right after your workout. But the problem mm -hmm. is sometimes you're so amped up that you can't actually do it. So um, the, yeah, so like bottom line is if you can do it, do it. It's mm -hmm. a good thing. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. Don't fight that urge, man. Just give in. All right, so M Sexton on or twelve twenty seven on uh, Snapchat yeah. says, "What is your opinion on eating oatmeal for breakfast? I've heard some people mix in Greek yogurt and almond milk with oatmeal. I know you guys mostly eat high protein, high fat breakfast. Do you ever eat high carb breakfast?" So I used to. Um, that's yeah. what I used to do. actually. I don't know if I ever actually used to eat oatmeal. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about it now. My meal always typically in the morning was eggs. 
Now that I think about it, and then no oatmeal would be like the second meal. Yeah. Because I would be training clients in the morning. I remember I would get up, I'd be training clients at 6 a.m. So I'd make a full ass meal, like a big egg, full ass, big meal (laughs) to get myself full. And then when I got home, I had my oatmeal after that. So I don't think I ever had a high carb breakfast. Um, And then, because I just find it makes me sluggish, it makes me more hungry as well. Uh, My energy levels aren't sustained because of it. Like the whole. Protein and fat for breakfast for me was an absolute game changer. I mentioned it so many times. Like it works for me. I know you're different though. Yeah, and the question was, do you ever? You totally did when you were growing up. Like, oh, oh my gosh, okay, four pieces yeah. of toast and jam. This yeah. guy used to put down in the morning <laughs> and the re- before high school, right? <laughs> the reason, well, it was I think even in like junior high. The reason was <laughs> because the toaster that we had at home had four slots in it. So <laughs> my thing. mind was like, okay, it has four That's slots. A That's a serving size. Put four <laughs> pieces in. And it wasn't like I was putting like a good quality nut butter on it or anything. It was like jam on top of that. What kind of bread? Was it white bread? Oh, white bread. Yeah. White bread and jam. That's like half a loaf of bread. <laughs> and if it wasn't that, it was uh, Frosted Flakes. You no, know what? My parents, I oh, got to yeah. give my parents credit. They were good at not allowing us to buy crappy cereal though. Oh, yeah. Or guess, somewhat healthier types. Well, when I say crappy cereal, like I'm talking like Fruit Loops and Frosted Flakes. Yeah, no, but we, we always didn't have had that like yeah. the less crappy <laughs> cereal, like uh, Corn Flakes, Shredded Wheat. Or uh, like brand, All Bran or yeah, something. Yeah, Raisin like, Bran was yeah, my favorite. Raisin, Raisin Bran today yeah. is still my favorite. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you were saying that I kind of feel differently about having a high carb breakfast. I actually like carbs first thing in the morning. If you just watched my What I Eat in a Day video, Um, that was a few weeks ago, you'll see that I almost every morning will start the morning with at least like a quarter cup of of oats or cereal or something. So it's different for each person and their metabolism type and their body type and like what kind of results you're getting with what you're doing. Um, But that's just kind of me. And Mm. I wouldn't consider that like a super high carb breakfast because it is a small portion size. So it's mostly carbs, but it's not like a a carb blowout. Yeah, but and actually, Speaking of it, I, I talked about this in the last episode where we talked about intermittent fasting. I've kind of actually, if you want to classify it as breakfast, I've kind of gotten away from eating breakfast lately where um, I don't typically have my first meal until it's like 10-ish. 10- that's still breakfast though because it's breaking your fast, right? It is. That's what I mean. Like Technically, yeah. like a breakfast, most people think it's yeah. like you get up and you eat. It's at 6 or 7 a.m. Yeah, but, but it could um, be at noon. As, yeah. If you saw my uh, full day of eating, like you see, I get up in the morning and I have lemon water. Then I, then I have coffee. And, yeah. Like I'll have a coconut oil and coffee and that'll keep drink. me in my greens rig. And that'll yeah. keep me full until I actually like eat around that time. So... Right. So it's not that having a high carb breakfast is wrong in any way. It's just to each his own and you got to try and see what works for you. My opinion's wrong. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to be right in Brad's book, then you don't do it. (laughs) All right. Next question from Margaret Namias from YouTube says, what are some examples of high glycemic and low glycemic fruits? Oh, Go into the fruit queen. Fruit, the fruit queen. The and while, fruit queen. And while you're uh, talking about that, I'm going to search my the website. Live Lean TV article. For that because yeah. I know I want to. I, I bet you there's a great article on there. <clears throat> Live Lean TV. Full of information. Glycemic Index Google. Or you just go to the website. Yeah. So there we go. LiveLeanTV.com. It's the first one that comes up on Google. Glycemic food rankings. Yeah. I, now, I don't know if I have it broken down by. By fruits. Fruits. Oh, I do. You do. Yes. Whoa. Oh, my God. This, and this was written in 2011. <laughs> We're amazing ourselves. Whoever right wrote now. this yeah. is a genius. So let's, 2007, babe? 2011. Oh, 11. <clears throat> okay, I was going to say, wow. So let me just run it down for you since we got it all right here. Low glycemic yeah. fruits, apples, nectarines, berries, I was cherries. I going to say berries. Yeah, yeah, berries are great. Great That's fruit. usually my first thought. Oranges, peaches, pears, plums, and strawberries. Strawberries, yeah. And then we have Hi. moderate Oh. Grapes, kiwis, figs, pineapples, raisins, bananas. I thought pineapples were going to be in the high category. Well, it's higher. Higher. And then you have your high, which is bananas again, oh. which are ripe. <laughs> so it is but ripe, ripe ones. Ripe bananas. With the brown dots. I remember learning about that. Like yeah, ripe that's bananas true. are a lot. 
lot. Uh, it's different, w- different index. So ripe bananas, papayas, mango, and Mangos. watermelons. But then there's the whole glycemic load side of it, where uh, yeah, it's watermelons don't actually have that much sugar in it. So there's a whole, whole because thing it's to it. Because mostly water. But go yeah. check out the website. I'll put the That's link. That's a good article right there. Yeah. I'll put the link right down in the video description below. You can check that out. So basically, what you want to do is have your high glycemic fruits post workout. That's awesome. What a perfect resource. Damn. <laughs> so we just answered that question like 100%. Hopefully that satisfies you. Satisfies yeah. you. I usually, like my two answers were going to be like low is things like berries yeah. and high is things like pineapple. That yeah. was going to be my answer. Yeah. And so I guess it was pretty much right. Berries, like berries are kind of the ultimate fruit. They're like, so good. We eat them like it, every single day. I mean, yeah. not only are they good, but frozen they're, berries they're, like, we buy good. They're expensive. They're good for you because they're so filled with nutrients. Just the nutrients that you need, and they're like we said, with their lower glycemic, um, whereas a lot of fiber, yeah. whereas some of the other fruits that we talked about are a little bit higher in sugar. Yeah. So um, you can have berries and any time of day. I also think with berries, like a smaller portion size is satisfying. I feel like it's harder to stop eating something like pineapple. You know, don't you think? It's like for me, it's yeah. easier to eat a giant plate full of pineapple than it would be to eat a big thing of berries. Like, well, my I don't know. My ultimate favorite all time fruit is. Mangoes. I knew it. Mangoes. And I actually gonna have you a do crate those. full of mangoes delivered to us. I'm so excited about it. So stay, we'll Best have to day stay ever. Stay tuned for that. But like, I don't know. I think I think the first mango I ever had was when I was down in Cuba or Dominican Republic or somewhere, Ew. and it was so delicious. It's like not like any mangoes you can get here in the U.S. or in Canada or anywhere. It's, yeah, the ones we get here are not that good usually. But <sighs> what's your favorite fruit? Uh, I think cherries, because you know how I feel about cherry pie. I freaking love cherry pie. You want to buy me a gift? Send me a pie. (laughs) Deliver the pie. Um, but yeah, I also love fresh cherries. Uh, it's hard for me to pick a favorite fruit because I like every single one. There isn't a fruit I don't like. Is there not? No. That would be interesting to go through all the fruits and see which ones you don't like. Yeah. I mean, unless there's like obscure ones I don't know about. But <laughs> all right, let's like get fruit a lot. That's a great question, though. Let's go to the next one. This is actually the last question of the day. We're gonna cut this one a little bit short. All right, because it's getting late here. As yeah, you we see, gotta go to how bed. dark it is here. It's nine thirty. But it's past our bedtime. <laughs> we gotta get our sleep game. <laughs> okay, last question of the day comes from Kelly Marie on Facebook. Kelly says, working in the school system with kids who have special needs, I've noticed a trend in children's lunch boxes of packaged sugary foods. I'm going to like this question. I'm going to tell you already. I'm going to like it. (laughs) Can you tell us what these foods that are full of chemicals, additives, and sugar do to the body other than weight gain, especially to children? Oh, you're going to get fierce again, aren't you? No, I'm, it's too late to get I fierce. I feel a rant coming out. <laughs> <laughs> He's tired now. Do you guys like my rants? No, I do. I enjoy them. You do I like do. my rants? Yeah. I hope everyone else does. But yeah. yeah, it's fun. You get all like red I and do. heated and do. passionate. It's nice. It's, it's funny because like I never used to be like that until I kind of found my calling and passion in life, mm-hmm. which is this. And mm-hmm. it's helping people. And so. I thought you were going to say until you started answering the same questions a thousand times. But... Yeah, well, that too. <laughs> so on that note, this is a different question. We love yeah, having we haven't different, gotten this one before. We love getting yeah. different questions. And all the questions on the show doesn't necessarily have to be about just fitness and health. Like it can be about anything. Like we're open book. Life. Life. And yeah, especially now children, since we're having children. our first child, we like care about these topics even more like now. Like moving countries and mm-hmm. like meeting on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're like full of Social experience. Social media relationships. Yeah. But yeah, okay, let's talk about lunchbox foods. Okay, so, back to the question. Yeah, what what are some common, you know, since we don't have a kid yet, we don't really oh, know well, what's in, in lunchboxes oh, these I days. Know, well, is it chocolate you, milk? Is like it, fruit roll-ups, um, crackers, lunchables. Yeah. Some, anything processed that parents Bologna can buy sandwiches? and just like throw it into a, like juice boxes, like just throw it into the bag. Here when you go. When we go to Costco, we always walk down all of the aisles and we look at like 90% of the stuff in there we would not touch. Yeah. Because it's all like little 100 calorie packs and like. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, are, the, mm-hmm. to answer your question, this isn't one of my specialties. Like I'm not a specialist in 
children and how children react to certain foods. But what I've heard and what I've read is that ADD, I don't know why. Attention dis- know, deficit know why just disorder. Did quotes, <laughs> for the podcast listeners, I did air quotes. Um, it's trick. I, I can't say this because I'm not 100% sure about this, but what I've heard or what I think I've heard is that it can be triggered by chemicals and preservatives and sweeteners in foods and just too much sugar. Like they're going crazy, not because they actually have an issue. It's because of the foods that their parents are feeding them, that the schools are feeding them. It affects the brain. It affects the learning abilities. Yes. Yeah. And the, and I, geez, I could. She already mentioned weight gain. That's obvious. I could so go on a rant as well right now. Right? That's what I said. No. Come on, do it. Going on a rant. (laughs) <laughs> do it rant, going rant. on a rant about kids uh not behaving in school and why that necessarily shouldn't be a bad thing oh okay well, that's a totally yeah, different a totally topic different babe. let's just put totally that one aside thing. but let's talk about their nutrition and how it affects yeah. their brain and their so body. i think it definitely does yeah. um so to all you parents out there i know it's tough we're going to be parents we're going to be creating lunches for our kids and we're going to do whatever we can possible to not be giving in the brown bag Fruit process oh, this, process yeah. that. Um, trying mm-hmm. to be better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trying to be better. Trying to um, spark the movement, or not even spark it. It's already started. Like there's yeah, lots of people, lots is. of parents out there that are yeah. caring about their children's lunchbox. We won't be the first ones. Yeah. But every single parent that pushes for this and that tries to give their child a better lunch is one more parent in the right direction. So even though you may feel sometimes that you're overwhelmed or that you're the only one who cares or that everyone else is doing it this way, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't. Because even if you were the only one out of hundreds, at least there's one, you know? And it's not to say we're we're going to try to be the perfect parents or that we're going to try to create the perfect kid who never yeah. has sugar, who never has any of this stuff. That's not, we're not what we're going to be. No. That's not what we're trying to be. We're just going to try yeah. to not control our kids, but try to control as much as possible what we do provide our kids in our home. Mm-hmm. So when our kids go off to play at another parent's place, we're not going to be like, they can't have Junior, this. you yeah. can't have this and just scold Junior. them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but we're just going to try when they're in our home, we're going to be yeah. very like, look, we can make this great tasting popsicle out of fresh fruit and water right. and freeze it as opposed to you getting this popsicle that's just full of sugar, fructose, high sugar corn syrup, pop. like all this other crap and try to educate our kids. And also like if you get excited about healthy foods, the kids like automatically get excited because they're going to really read off your vibes and stuff. Mm-hmm. So if your vibe says that healthy food isn't good and junk food is really good, then of course they're going to be that way as well. <laughs> so if you can like train them from a young age that junk food is gross and bad for you and, yeah. and detrimental to your body, then they'll just grow up believing that healthy food is better, tastes better, yeah. and you know does better. better things. To, yeah, it feels better. And, so it, and it actually works. When the you mindset. Because we trick our dog into eating. <laughs> we do. <laughs> eating carrots. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, our dog, we don't feed our dog like traditional dog treats. We'll feed them, feed him uh, like carrots. Sweet potato. Sweet, like mm-hmm. uh, lettuce. And mm-hmm. like we'll put lettuce down, yeah. he'll look at it, he'll chew it, and then he'll spit it He's out. It's kind of like... And then I'll pick it up and I'll pretend like I'm eating it. And then he looks at me and then I'll give it to him. And then he eats and then it he again. And he wants it, yeah. So if dogs are in tune with this, I know our kid's going to be in tune with it. And if well. you break off a piece of lettuce and you go, you want a treat? You want a treat? Yeah. Then he's like, ooh. Like, yeah, he gets super excited. So it's really, a lot of it has to do with the parenting. But I mean, her question is really, what does it do to a child's body? I think all sorts of bad things. And it doesn't... It's not the body. It's the brain. Like, it's the mind, what she was saying. Well, no, she asked, what does it do to a child's body? Yeah. Other than weight gain. And I think that there's a lot of things that can happen to your internal organs um, because of the, like, you know, your liver and your kidneys have to function differently to process excess fat and excess sugar. So, yeah, it's not going to be, it's also, you know, kind of setting them up for a lifetime of struggling mm-hmm. with weight loss and, and then having poor sleep patterns. And there's a lot of stuff. So I would just, there's so many reasons not to give your kids that kind of food. So that. Hopefully you won't. Is no. that. That is that. That's how we feel about it. So that's another episode. Yeah. Thanks for your questions, guys. Awesome job bringing the questions. We like that a lot of them are really unique this time keep bringing them on Mm -hmm. and we will answer them in future episodes your involvement is so important to this show and shout out to the podcast listeners 
We can't forget about you guys. We love you over there. Hopefully you're like working out with us right now. Hopefully you're driving in the car listening to us. You're chuckling with us. You're having fun with us. You're learning with us. Um, if you haven't actually downloaded the podcast yet, go do it. That's like one of the best ways to consume this content that we're doing. Video's cool because yeah. you're looking at us and we're pretty hot and stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> And pretty full of ourselves. And pretty full of ourselves. Yeah. Very but, humble. But um, no, so go go take a listen on the podcast if you haven't yet. So question yeah. of the day. Question of the day is my turn to ask. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, tell us what is your, how much do you work out per week? So like what is your workout schedule like in a nutshell? Do you work out two days a week, five days a week? Are you like, uh, you know, super workoutaholic, having a hard time taking rest days? Tell us down below what is your level of fitness on a weekly basis, how many times you work out and the intensity. Keep the conversation going. You can reply to other people's comments. We want you guys creating this community and like you're keeping each other accountable. You're being buddy-buddy yes. with each other. We'll be down there as well. So thanks for watching on this episode. Thanks for listening as well. And we'll see you at the next episode. Thanks for watching. Keep living lean. Boy.